going to the uh, next classification of fluids, it's very important to define the term uh, shear force in a fluid. Assuming that you have a fluid element of this size, when you apply some force, when you take, uh, let's imagine a fluid and you try to apply some force, as a result it deforms. It deforms and you have distribution of forces in the equal directions. Say, when you apply the force in this direction, when you apply the pressure in this direction, or when you apply the force in this direction, what happens? You will have a displacement. So, the force will be acting like this. That is why I put the arrow mark like this. On the flip side, you have also the force acting in the opposite direction. That is why this force is. This force is due to the shear. This is what we call as shear. When you have, when you have, imagine you have a liquid layers. When you are applying some pressure or some force on one of the fluid layers, imagine that the fluid is distributed. Then imagine you have a liquid, you have layers of liquid. When you have a layers of liquid, when you apply some force, that will this when this will be acting in this direction as well as in this direction. Now let's consider a small piece of it and zoom it here. And when you apply the force or when, when you apply the pressure, what happens is your element will try to deform. So the force will be acting in one direction and the force is acting in this direction. So this pressure what you have is due to the shear of one layer over the other. That is how we make the assumption in fluid mechanics. Since it is a fluid, we have considered the layers of fluid. So this is what you we mean by shear force. Now we can looking at the definition of fluid, real edge again, in terms of shear forces, what we can define as a fluid is, a fluid is nothing but a substance which deforms continuously when you apply a shear force. So that is what a fluid means. So because of this we have a stress generated. So what is the stress is, since you are applying shear force, the stress corresponding to that would be shear stress and shear force by area is what you call as stress because stress is nothing but force by area. So whenever there is a stress, you also have strain. What is strain? What does strain do? You will try to, this deformation you need to quantify. So this will, strain will measure the deformation. It is nothing but a measurement of the deformation which is caused by shear stress. That is what uh, shear strain does. So it tries to measure the changes, the uh, sizes or whatever and then it will do. Depending upon the shear stress, you can calculate the strain. To look more into detail, let's assume a liquid droplet. For instance, we can uh, assume that it's a round shaped liquid water droplet itself. By the application of shear force, what we do, we'll, we'll let's take this example itself. We have a liquid layer of this size. Instead of this and this, we let's focus on these two. Let's assume that because of the force, this element has moved from this to this place and uh, the distance it has covered, let's assume to be x and the time taken for it, let's assume to be time t. So, shear stress strain would be change in distance by the actual one. Now, rate of shear strain would be what? It would be nothing but 5 by t. So what we have taken? We have taken a liquid layer here and when we have assumed a particular element here, when you apply a force, we assume that it has moved to some distance x in time t. So that is what I have shown here. The, the position, new position occupied by it is b. So we are trying to uh, see the distance and we are trying to calculate the rate of shear strain. What is rate of shear strain? Shear strain by time. What is shear strain? 
She had been nothing but the chain, the distance which it has moved by time. Now, let's try to realize the terms. What we can do? x by t by 1. So, what is distance by time? It is velocity. So, I write it as either u and y. So, what is shear strength? It is nothing but the velocity by the distance. Say, for example, you have now we have taken this plus this. Similarly, after some time, let's assume this element would go from here. So, in that case, you will have a gradient. So, you have three displacements, you have two displacements x1 to x2 or y1 to y2 and based on that you can write the shear strain which will be of du by dy because that will tell you based on the gradient, you have gradients in between two places. Similarly, now we have case, we have taken a case for a liquid layer, a single layer. Imagine that you have too much of liquid layer like a stack like this. So whenever you apply a force or whenever the fluid is flowing, whenever the fluid is flowing over a pipe, you will have a difference in velocities. So first layer might be slower than the second, second might be slower than the third, third might be slower than the fourth or it goes on whatever. As a result of which you have a velocity gradient generated. Assuming that this to be x and this to be y. So what happens? You will have a velocity generating gradient in the y direction. So which can be quantified? The strain would be like this. The change in velocity gradient which is velocity in the y direction. Because you have the velocity changes in the y direction, you quantify the velocity gradient as that. That is the significance of velocity gradient. And that is why velocity is an important factor in fluid mechanics. So, now we have defined shear stress. We have defined shear strain. This is based on the shear force. It is based on velocity gradient. Now, assuming that you have a shear stress strictly proportional to the velocity gradient or the shear strain because shear strain is nothing but the velocity gradient. So, if shear stress takes up a linear relation and it is proportional to the shear strain. I define shear stress by tau and shear strain by the velocity gradient du by du. To remove this proportionality constant, you have a term called viscosity, which is nothing but the property of the fluid. So, tau is equal to mu into du by dy. This linear relationship is what we call as Newton's law relationship and uh, you define this as Newton's law of viscosity. What does it tell you? It tells you that shear stress is directly proportional to the shear strain. It gives you a linear relationship between the shear stress and shear strain. Mathematically, if you look at it, this is to the power of 1 and velocity gradient to the power of 1. So, you can assume that to be y is equal to mx form, where m is the slope. Here, when you plot shear stress versus shear strain, the slope would be viscosity. Based on this, we can quantify two fluids. What are the two fluids? One is, I will write it here, Newtonian fluid and is non-Newtonian fluid. 
Babylonian Jewry. So, what is a fluid? A fluid is nothing but which deforms or which changes its behavior when you apply a shear force. How do you quantify shear force? You require shear stress. How could you measure the deformation due to the shear force? By measuring shear strain. How do you measure shear strain? In terms of velocity. Energy. So shear stress, proportionality between shear stress and the velocity gradient or the rate of shear strain. Based on that, you can quantify whether they fall in linear, linear relationship and the relationship, the, the law which tells you about this, which gives you the relationship between the linear relationship between the shear, shear stress and the shear strain is nothing but the Newton's law viscosity because the proportionality constant is this dynamic viscosity. So, based on this law, we can try to classify fluid which is Newtonian fluid and non Newtonian fluid. Apart from the, uh, up, this is one way of classification. The other way of classification is based on the properties, physical properties. That is, uh, let me write this. One is the based on density, viscosity. It can be dynamic. or it can be uh, kinematic which is nothing but viscosity by dynamic viscosity by density and compressibility based on this we can tell them whether the fluid is ideal real incompressible or compressible. Using this shear stress and shear strain, you can tell whether it is Newtonian or non-Newtonian. Now, what does, how Newtonian fluids resemble like? Newtonian fluids, they follow a linear relationship. That is, the shear stress is proportional to the rate of shear strain. This would be minus mu into du by dy. So, Newtonian fluids, I will explain the significance of negative sign later. Newtonian fluids follows this relation. So, it is nothing but a linear relationship between the shear stress and the rate of shear strain. What are non Newtonian fluids? Non Newtonian fluids. is proportional to du by dy. non Newtonian. this can be given by mu into du by dy. non Newtonian, as the name suggests, they don't follow a linear relationship. They can take the form of t is equal to tau is equal to a plus some b into uh, du by dy. These powers will change. So it takes the form of, it can be a linear or it can be with an intercept. You can assume that to be, it can be of 
y equal to mx plus c or uh, whatever. It does it uh, for a linear, linear relationship. Whereas here, we can definitely assume that it follows a linear relationship and the slope is viscosity. But this is not the case in non linear fluids. non linear fluids, doesn't follow a linear relation, doesn't follow Newton's law of mean, doesn't follow linearly. There will not be a linear relation, no linear relation between the shear stress and shear strain, rate of shear strain. 